We are slow traveling through Sydney, Australia, which is great. It's really important to be able to slow travel because it means that some days when we don't feel like it, we can stay inside and not feel the pressure to go off and see all the tourist sites. And that's really important today because it's 102. Good evening. A severe weather warning is in place tonight as Sydney braces for more wild storms. The worst is yet to come. We are from the U.S. and had previously spent a lot of time on the west coast of Australia in Perth, yet we were very surprised by the weather in Sydney. We are out exploring the parks and natural spaces, so along the way we will share with you what we discovered about Sydney's weather, so you will know what to expect when you visit. We're out here at Prince Albert Park today, and uh, it's cloudy and a little uh, windy right now, but one of the things we've noticed is everybody's talking about the weather here in Sydney, and uh, they're very aware of climate change, and in fact, recently they just had extreme heat that we just avoided, so it's uh, a a little cloudy and windy right now, but we're enjoying getting out and it's very cool and temperate. Uh, for sure, Australia is aware of and doing a lot of discussion about climate change and uh, not only extreme heat, but extreme winds that have knocked out electricity and done all kinds of things. We've also been watching the news today talking about flooding. So climate change and weather and all things related are very much on top of mind of Australians. They're really focusing on it. It's going to be interesting for us to kind of uh, witness this ourselves and enjoy some of the weather. Today it's kind of nice and we're having fun out here. We're out here enjoying Prince Alfred Park and uh, we just learned that it's actually named after Prince Alfred, the Duke of Edinburgh, who uh, narrowly escaped assassination. There was an assassination attempt on his life here in Sydney. And so after that happened, to, to make amends, they started naming things after him and including this park. So that's why uh, Prince Alfred Park is called Prince Alfred Park in Sydney. Now we've moved to Belmore Park, uh, which is a really pretty little park. It has a lot of great trees. I think they're jacaranda trees. And I made could... that up. Oh, you made that up? Yeah, I totally made that up. Okay, well, I have no idea what kind of trees these are <laughs> because I was listening to my husband, uh, but they're beautiful trees. And this park is right next to the train station, the central train station, which is really nice. Yeah, it's really nice here right now. It's pretty cool. Um, but we were looking around on um, the weather, as we were talking about earlier, and they've actually been tracking the weather in Sydney since 1910. And since 1910, uh, the weather in Sydney has risen about two to three degrees Fahrenheit. And that's even more pronounced in recent years, and they expect that to continue because of global warming. So it's definitely uh, nice out here now, but they can get some heat, and it's definitely raising over time. We're outside the Anzac Memorial, which is a really beautiful, peaceful spot. It's dedicated to the people that fought in World War I uh, when Australia was a very new country. It's a beautiful space, very serene. It's got a memorial uh, eternal flame there and a really nice, peaceful place to come and honor those that um, fought for Australia all those years ago. As you can see, it's a rainy day in Hyde Park. Although Australia frequently suffers drought, the warming Australian atmosphere also holds more moisture and increases the intensity of extreme rainfall events. Here in Hyde Park, there's a statue behind me of Captain Cook, who is the gentleman that actually mapped the entire east coast of Australia and was actually the first one to circumnavigate um, New Zealand. Uh, but his mapping actually allowed for the expansion and the settlement of much of Australia. So he's attributed to uh, doing things that were really important to the development of the country. Uh, 
Hyde Park is really large. It incorporates the Australian Museum over there that's uh, got the original historic building in this beautiful modern addition, as well as St. Mary's Cathedral behind me. It's a really uh, beautiful spot. You can walk around here. There's green areas incorporated along with uh, many buildings and even water features like the one behind me. We're now at Cook and Phillip Park, uh, which is beautiful, and it's got a really interesting history. This park was built uh, because it was right next to Hyde Park Barracks, the jail, and they cleared this area and actually had the prisoners grow vegetables here, so they grew their own food. It provided hard labor uh, to keep the prisoners busy, and it also, of course, offset the cost of having to feed them by them growing their own food. It was used for a while, but the soil was, uh, the soil was not that great, so they had to abandon it uh, a few years later. It stopped raining now, but uh, as Sydney gets wetter, uh, they've actually found out that the interior of the country is getting drier and so dry sometimes that it has crazy dust storms. Uh, one of those dust storms actually was so bad that it actually came to Sydney in 2009 and it turned all the skies red. Uh, so the weather here has definitely got some changes and it's got a lot of stories behind it too. We are here at our favorite park in Sydney, the Royal Botanic Garden. It's free to walk through and we came back here again and again. Travel tips on when to come to Sydney. The warm season is actually November through March and the hottest month is January, believe it or not. Um, uh, and the high is about 79 degrees there. The cooler season starts in May and goes to August, and the actually coolest month is July. In July, the lows go down to about 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so it's very different, Southern Hemisphere, and you gotta really remember uh, to, to come at the right time. We're here again at a great time and really enjoying this shoulder season. We're near the end of our walk and it's perfect because the skies are starting to clear and we've got some sunshine. We're getting our first view of the Harbor Bridge and the famous Opera House, uh, so it's perfect for us. Uh, it's a little humid right now and really if you look at the stats, the most humid month is February when we're here and uh, the most uh, least humid month is actually in July when it's colder. So if you come to Sydney, count on having some humidity. We've got some now. It's not too bad because the uh, weather is relatively temperate, uh, but when it gets hot and humid, you'll wanna make sure you're prepared. We're here with this great view of the Sydney Harbor Bridge and the Opera House, which is right around toward the end of the Botanic Garden under this beautiful tree. So if you want this view, you can come get it too by coming through the Botanical Garden and up by the big tree. In spite of all the crazy weather changes that are going on in the world, and certainly in Australia, we really are impressed with how much Australia is taking it seriously and dealing with it. Um, if you wanna to come to Australia, the best times to come are between March and May and between September and November. That's when the weather is great and the crowds are down. Uh, it's a wonderful time to be here and we have had an amazing time. So come along, you'll love it. We've always heard that convicts settled Australia, land already occupied by the indigenous cultures. Look for our video where we go in search of the truth.